What is up people, welcome back. Hope all of you guys are doing well. I had to eclipse myself away from YouTube for a couple of weeks and focus on the family a little bit. So I spent the last couple of weeks swinging and zip lining in the trees and paddle boarding and all that good stuff. So I feel refreshed and ready to make some videos and there's no better way to start the off season than with a Habs prospect pool video. So without further ado, let's get this thing started. So to start this thing up, there's just way too many players in the abs prospect pool to talk about each and every one of them so a top 10 with some honorable mentions seems to be the way to go what i like is that the habs have multiple role players targeted for different spots in the future lineup like if we take luke tuck and florian jaika and tyler thorpe they're all players targeted to be big physical fourth line players that can still bring some offense to the team jaika and tuck can make plays around the net and thorpe can just really shoot the puck so they all have a little bit of something same could be said with sam harris who's much smaller but still very physical and also probably a little bit more on the skilled side compared to the three other player but still would project as a fourth line player that can bring some offense and physicality they have bottom six defensively minded prospect that also brings some offense and different element in their game like atos koivu who has a solid shot and is also very responsible defensively they have oliver kapanen who can both shoot and make plays while taking care of the defensive part of the game first same can be said for Logan Sawyer. They also have other bottom six and middle six forwards with a little bit more skill and a little bit more of an offensive projection like Philip Eriksson who's had a great season in the Alsvenskan. They have Philip Meshar who's everyone's been calling a bust but is actually a very intriguing player. The stats are definitely not helping his case but he looks better than his stat sheet in my opinion and overall he's still an incredible skater with a non-stop motor with good vision and good hands and good shot. I really wanted to put him in the top 10 but I gave the edge to other players because of their production in their respective league but anyway i think meshar is better than what people give him credit for they also have other players like emil heineman who also fit that profile of bottom six middle six player with not so bad offensive projection they also have offense first type of players like sean ferrell and luke middlestat and mccarr cannon who might not make it at all but do have the tools to develop an offensive game obviously they're not all gonna make it but the abs got the depth of their roster covered for the four future with different type and different size players that can fit a little bit everywhere in the bottom six you can add players like owen Pratt and vincent roller and yevgeny volokin and kante miller to players who could slowly make their way to the depth roles in the nhl maybe even more for volokin all right, so let's get into the meat of the video and talk about the guys that have a chance to be a little bit more exciting. I have Bogdan Konyushkov ranked at number 10 for the Habs prospect pool. Bogdan was named captain of the Nizhny Novgorod Torpedo, <laughs> sorry for my Russian, a team that is that is coached by Igor Larionov and did really well. He was clearly their number one defenseman, averaging over 23 minutes a night and also being their number one solution on the power play as the quarterback. He didn't progress all that much over last season in terms of stats but he's almost half a point per game in the KHL as a 20 and a 21 year old. His 20 year old season was actually better than Alexander Nikishin but then at 21 Nikishin exploded and became one of the very best defensive prospects in the world so yeah it was close but it's not that close anymore. I'm not sure what is Kanyushkov's potential, but I would say something similar to Jordan Harris with a touch more offense, but he's that type of complete defenseman who doesn't hurt your team defensively, but also won't do too much to help it offensively, but can definitely move the play forward from the defensive zone and retrieve the puck without boneheaded plays or panic along the board. I think he can be a solid third pair D if the trajectory stays linear. And at number 9, I have Adam Engstrom, and he's the complete other way around. He projects as a more capable offensive defenseman with a lot more fakes and misdirection in his game, and a solid wrist shot from the blue line or the upper half of the offensive zone. But defensively, and on puck retrievals, it's not always clean. He has very good mobility going forward and backwards, so he can compensate for mistakes against the rush. And he can get to pucks first on retrieval, but there's a bit too much precipitation with the puck in his game. Which is a little bit strange, since he's constantly scanning the eyes, but he kind of panics a little bit under pressure sometimes. He definitely, he's definitely going to need some time with the rocket to round out his game and learn to make decisions with the puck under pressure and with restricted time and 
restricted space, but I think he has the tools to make it happen. He also has the tools to make it happen in a top four role. Obviously, there's no guarantee for this kind of stuff, but with his vision and his deceptiveness and his wrister, his length and his skating, if he can put it all together and round out his game or round out some part of his game, he has very good potential. And at number 8, I have Owen Beck, and I'm very happy that I got to see him play a more offensive role with the Sagana Spirit. He made a lot more plays, and he took a lot more shots, and he was just overall way more aggressive with the puck, trying to make things happen shift after shift. All this while always supporting his defense deep on retrievals, and never cheating for offense. Obviously, we can take all of this with a massive grain of salt since he's a 20-year-old in the OHL, right? So it would not be looking great anyways if he didn't actually start putting up numbers. But it's the fact that he scored 34 goals and 81 points while being a defensive juggernaut and winning 58% of his draws that is exciting. I don't think Beck is a top six player but i think that he's a good third line center that can play up in the lineup when needed and can play with offensively skilled player because he has the hockey sense to follow them and the defensive iq and skating to cover for their mistake he's by no means a spectacular player or the player that is making things happen on the ice but he reads the offense off the puck really well and always finds ways to be open for a quick shot or to redirect the puck with a quick pass he will be a very useful player for the habs killing penalties working hard taking crucial face off and bring secondary offense i think he has the tools and the hockey sense to fall somewhere between dano and evans dano is probably too high of a ceiling defensively and offensively but somewhere in between seems appropriate for me and at number 7, this is where we jump to a different tier of prospect and I have Joshua Hua. And Hua was a top prospect from a very young age, producing at the same clip as Stéphane Richer and Mike Ribeiro in the Triple A's, followed by an OK season with the Sea Dogs and then another not so great season where he wanted to be traded and where there was rumors of bad attitude. But the next season after, he put all of this behind him and started his incredible progression and put his development back on track with two fantastic seasons in the queue back to back, an incredible U20 playing with Bedard and a fantastic debut of a professional career in the AHL and the NHL. We could look at the production only and tell ourselves that there's something there, but if you watch the AHL or the NHL, Joshua showed flashes of incredible skills and hockey sense all season long. First, his shot is very, very solid and he can score against pros even from distance. He has a really good vision and the skills to hit the tightest seams and all of last season when I watched Liam Greentree, I thought to myself that he looked like Joshua Hua 2.0. Both players are high-end skills but aren't very, very good skater for the NHL and they both develop a special type of patience with the puck to make plays while waiting for players to close on them both have great shots and are just as good offensively with and without the puck i think what has some serious top six potential at the very least middle six potential with the capacity to play up in the lineup and produce offensively not sure if it's going to happen next season but he's not that far off from being a productive nhl player in my opinion and at number 6, I have the newly acquired Michael Hage who blends a little bit of everything in his game and a solid production in USHL. Hage had the third best non-US NTDP production in terms of points per game in the USHL with 1.39 points per game behind Connolly and Swanson who had 1.50 and 1.40 respectively. This production is on par with players like Kyle Connor and Jaden Schwartz and Paul Stashny so if next season he jumps to 71 points and 35 goals in 38 games at Michigan like Connor did, then we know we have a real player. <laughs> I don't think so. Age is a guy that, like I've said in multiple videos before the draft, he has a lot going for him. He has decent size standing at 6 foot 1, 190 pounds, even though we clearly need to add muscles. He has very good speed and overall skating. He has great hands, very good one-on-one -on -one ability. He's, good, he's a good playmaker and he has a versatile shot. Offensively, he's very well-rounded. In my opinion, the reason why some had him lower than where he went is because of the lack of consistency night after night. Some night, he can take over the game and be the main driver of offense on the ice and on other nights, he's a little too much like a ballerina and can't find ways to get the puck to the inside. I wouldn't say it's worrisome considering the whole story behind him and the injuries, but it's a facet of his game that definitely 
need some improvement in the next couple of years. But overall, he has top 6 potential with a chance to stay down the middle, but I find that as he is right now, he would be best used on the wing as a fantastic rush attacker using his skating, his hands and his fakes to create offense. And into the top 5 with Logan Mayu and sometimes I have to stop myself with Mayu because I just really like him. I think he has a lot of tools, he's a hell of an athlete and the progression mentally and on the ice is significant. Mayu is big, he's physical, he skates really really well, he has a bomb from the point, he's very confident with the puck on his stick, the guy had 47 points and 14 goals in 72 games in his first pro season in the AHL. Defensively, it started as somewhat of a mess, but again, the progression in his defensive game and reads was significant over the season. It's not perfect, and I don't think it ever will be, but he has the athleticism to cover for some of his mistakes, and he has the offensive capabilities to make you forget about his limitations. In his prime, I see Mayu as some type of Darnell Nurse, a top 4 defenseman that leans on the offensive side with some questionable decision on the defensive side and in transition from night to night, but with an overall positive impact on the team. This one might come as somewhat of a surprise, but I have David Reinbacker at number 4, and the reasons why I have David Reinbacker at number 4 are first, because I was not his most active cheerleader in his draft year, which is just a year ago. I thought he missed some pop in his game to be a real number 1 defenseman. Second, because compared to my number 3, I don't think he improved all that much over the season. Even that I would say that his skating kind of regressed compared to his draft year somehow. And third, because again, compared to my number 3, he doesn't seem to have that gamer side or a guy that elevates his game when it matters, a guy that will take his team on his back and push them as far as he possibly can. But that doesn't make him a bad prospect in any way, shape or form whatsoever, it just doesn't make him a game changer. Reinbacker is a solid defensive prospect with good size, good skating and a good head on his shoulder on both sides of the puck. Most of his value comes as on the defensive part of the game. In his draft year, he was a great rush defender, but then last season, he was pretty terrible at it until the second half of the season or the last third of the season where he kind of got it back to where it was the season prior. But then he came to Laval and everything changed. He started playing very well, he made a lot of heads up play, he used his skating and his body to make stops, made quick decisions with the puck, great outlet passes, even created some offense. The environment changed everything for him. I think that because of his defensive details, his hockey sense and his reach and his length and his skating, he has the potential to be a first pair defenseman. I'm not sure if he has a high chance to get there, but he's almost a sure shot to be a top 4 defenseman. In my opinion, his ceiling is some type of Jacob Slavin, a, ra a rangy and mobile defenseman who excels in transition, kill penalties, has tremendous value defensively and can put up 35-40 points on the board. If Reinbacker becomes Slavin or a force link without the shot obviously, I think it's a tremendous pick at number 5. But if he's a top 4, it's a bit of a missed opportunity, but he's still a very valuable player for the team. So, who's that mysterious player at number 3 you ask? <laughs> that player is my boy Jacob Fowler. I am as far as it gets from a goalie type of guy. As a Habs fan, goalies is all I had to enjoy my entire life. From Roy to Theodore to Carey Price, it's nice and everything, but I'm just so done with goalies being the best player on the team. To the point where I don't even rank them or scout them anymore. But then, before the last year's draft, there was this guy who became a freaking brick wall in the playoff in the USHL. I saw a guy fighting for pucks, a competitor, a guy that was chopping down guys in front, in front of him trying to screen him, a guy that wasn't always in perfect position but would give everything to stop the impossible puck night after night, a guy that was just so aggressive and explosive post to post, just an incredible gamer. And then the Habs picked him and put him in that draft video and I found love again. I don't know much about goalies and even though his stats are great this season, they're not like Connor Elliebuck level great. I just like his demeanor on the ice, he seems to have that swagger or that little something that special players have. It's obvious by watching him that he's a very good tendy and the stat supports this, but more than anything, it's his competitiveness that makes me like him that much. I think 
there's a fair chance that he's our Ollinger or that he's our UC Saros. Maybe not to that level, but I think he has number one goalie written all over him. And at number two, I have Lane Hudson. And honestly, the more I watch him and the more I'm convinced that he's a special type of player, I was a big believer in Hudson in his draft year. And when we passed on him at 26 and then at 33, I was not a happy camper, but I was also always that guy who had some reservation and wanted to see more before I tag him as a blue chip prospect. <laughs> get it but every single game he made unbelievable unbelievable plays then he made defensive mistakes and you could see that he took it personally and would use it to learn and get better from it then he made one too many shaky shaky behind the net and got the puck stripped from him for a high danger chance against just for him to never put himself in that situation again and better calculate his space and his time for a spin and explode out of it every mistake has been an opportunity to learn from you don't really see him make the same one again and again again i know that he's like five foot but there's just something special with him he isn't the fastest skater also but he will learn to compensate with his hockey sense he's super competitive he's super smart he's super skilled he's like a quinn Hughes without the generational level skating on the ice sending misdirection after misdirection opening space all over the ice to me lane is in the same tier as the number one player on this list he just carry more risk because he has to defend at that size which isn't easy to do in the NHL, but every time I watch him, I'm getting more and more convinced that he's a future superstar and that he will just find a way to make it work with his size. And at number one, probably the most exciting player drafted by the Habs in like four decades or so, and probably the player with the highest ceiling this team has drafted in my life, I got Ivan Demidov. There are players for who I was really excited. There was Galchenyuk in 2012, Sergeyev in 2016, there was Caulfield in 2019, but even though I was jumping up and down in my house when we drafted Caulfield, none of them come close to how excited I am for Demidov. Demidov is the most dynamic player in this draft offensively, and he works hard everywhere on the ice. He doesn't cheat for offense all night long, and he creates offense any way you want it. The fact that he's almost 6 foot 1 and not 5 11 and the fact that he's 190 pounds and not 168 like what the MHL websites still show to these days are very big pluses in my book. If he can get bigger and stronger and be effective in puck battles and not be pushed around on the ice as well as having superstar skills, I'll take that every day obviously. I already talked about Demidov at length in multiple videos so I don't have much to add here but let me tell you that I believe that Demidov is probably the second or maybe the third best player outside of the NHL after Celebrini and Mishkov and might even be better than Mishkov but I'm not there yet even though he's definitely a more spectacular type of player but the potential is through the roof. The mix of skills, work ethic, hockey sense make him the player with the highest offensive potential in this draft and I can't wait to see him in Montreal soon. Voila for the first post draft video. I don't really have a plan for this summer. I'm not sure exactly what to do and how to do it. So if you have any suggestions, I'm open to it. But I will probably do more podcasts than videos or just maybe simple videos to put together just talking and stuff since it's a lot less time consuming. So anyways, we'll see. I'll try to do something every week, maybe every two weeks. We'll see how it goes. But anyways, as always, thanks for watching. Have a nice summer. Peace.